its domain. <sighs> Don't be the kid who tries to figure out what x plus 5 times x squared plus x plus 1 is. Because if you do that, are you making it look rougher or simpler? If you, try, if you try to figure out what x plus 5 times x squared plus x plus 1 is, is it going to be simpler? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. What you do have to figure out is you have to figure out how x cubed minus 1 factors. First thing you're supposed to think about is factoring. Do we know a special pattern you need to factor x cubed minus 1? That's the pattern you need. You need a pattern a cubed minus b cubed. How does an a cubed minus a b cubed factor? You're stuck up in that brain, y'all. I see some kids write down soap when they take quizzes. Good for them. Why do they write down soap? The S stands for same. It's A cubed minus B cubed. What's in the first set of parentheses? A minus symbol, right? What's the OA stand for? Opposite, that's right. So the second sign you see in that second set of parentheses is a plus symbol. What's the AP for? Always positive. Well, today's been a lot of fun. It's giving you the signs. Same, opposite, was negative, now it's positive. Last one's always positive. Now, you have to figure out what you cube to become x cubed. What's the a value? There's literally a line up here, kids, a cubed and b cubed. What do you cube to become x cubed? X, what do you cube to become 1? Nope. 1. We don't care about the signs. It's, it's A cubed minus B cubed. B is not negative 1. B cubed is not negative 1. B is 1. Let me plug stuff in. All right, so we have x plus 5. We're going to attempt to factor the easiest difference of two cubes that exists, which is x cubed minus 1. And what's the a thing again? x. So everywhere I see an a, I'm an x. Everywhere I see a b, I'm a what? 1. So plugging in that first set of parentheses, a minus b, I get x minus 1. What am I supposed to do with that x in the second set? Square it. What am I supposed to do with a and, b, a and B here? Multiply them. So that'd be 1 times x, which is x. What am I supposed to do with B in the finally? Square it. You don't know the difference of two cubes and some two cubes pattern. I don't know that you'll test level four. I don't know why I wrote x squared. One squared is what? One. By the way, that's sitting over a 1. Now, hopefully you realize what's about to cancel. But before you cancel, what are you supposed to figure out? Domain. What values of x can you not be? What can you not divide by? Zero. You just can't do it. So if you're looking at that set of parentheses on the denominator that says x minus 1, what can x be? Can't hear you. 1. I don't know why kids struggle with this so much, but they just do. Because if x was 1, you'd have 1 minus 1, which is 0. And if you tried to divide by 0, poof, everything's over. It didn't work. Anything else? Is there a possibility there could be a 0 at x squared plus x plus 1? How do you figure it out? Or in this case, not equal to zero. Let's 
because it's not going to be zero, it can be zero. It does not get a current. Are there factors of one on the end that add the one in the middle? What do you got to do? Did it quadrate right one? X equals negative B plus or minus square root. B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Sorry, my voice isn't what it used to be. That's what you're plugging into. I have about 40% of juniors couldn't do that. Pretty bad. You're looking at your equation, your A, B, and C values. Specifically, what's the A value? What is it? 1. It's in front of x squared. So you understood 1. What's the B value? Also 1. What's the C value? Also 1. Just plug stuff in and see where it goes. Sorry you're so miserable. Some of you will thank me later on when you take college level math. Opposite B? Negative 1. Plus or minus square root. Don't do the snake oil because you all couldn't tell me stuff. Let's go through that one. Square it. Times 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is 1. You got negative 1 for B? Nope. I got positive 1. Nope. A, B, and C are the coefficients in front of x squared x and then the constant at the end. That's why things take so long. What's in the radical? Negative 4. What's in the radical, kids? 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1. Negative 3. Real or imaginary answers? We wasted five minutes of class time, which we probably needed to anyways, because we don't know how to use a quadratic formula. On that, why did I say it was a waste of time? Because you forgot something. You can go back and look at the notes you took last fall. The notes you took last fall explicitly say this piece right here is always imaginary. Domain is defined as real input. That's what domain is. Are these real things? No. Some of you are staring at me like I just wasted your time. Why didn't you tell me it was going to be imaginary? Right? If you told me it was imaginary, would I have wasted your time with the quadratic formula? Nope. I wouldn't have. Now, back to the actual question of what you can throw away. What exists up high and down low? You've got a lot of evil faces this morning. Nobody wants to be here today. Here's your result. X plus 5 over X minus 1. There's something I meant to do with you on the previous slide. I need to go back to that. I also want to graph it. I want to go back a couple of slides. I want to do some graphing. We have time. We canceled stuff out of that one, didn't we? What did that one end up being? We had x plus 3. It was sitting over x times x plus 5. You ever hear the saying, you don't know your difference between your ass and a hole in the ground? You ever hear that one? You never heard that one. You're from, you're from New York. It's pretty common saying around here, isn't it? In the very never heard, well, you did now. Usually it goes along lines of, oh, you're so dumb, you don't know any difference when your ass not holding around. That's the way it usually goes. That's what I got told. So, I'm sure it still goes around. Remember that one. 
Do you know the difference between an asymptote and a hole in the graph? Hmm. You know what an asymptote is? Okay. We got two functions. On this one, we probably said the domain was all values of x such that x is not 0, x is not 5, and x is not negative 5. So two or three days ago, I was teaching about asymptotes. If that's the things you couldn't have been, where would you have expected vertical asymptotes at? You guys just take the lesson and throw it right out the window, don't you? Zero you would have expected vertical asymptotes at x equals 0, x equals 5, and x equals negative 5. You'd expect to see those undrawn vertical asymptotes. Now, sadly, y'all uh, y'all as a whole have taken them four of my calculators, so I could do this in the ugly calculator, and so do you, unless you have your own. Grab one of the old TI-84s. We'll look at it in a non-color graph. We're going to graph the original function. And Parker's right. You expect to see vertical asymptotes in those three places. It's a shame I don't have a color calculator. This graph looks so much better. Now, these calculators may or may not have math num in over D. I can't guarantee you they do. Some of them do, some of them don't. If they have it, so be it. They don't, they don't. I'm going to have to graph the way I was taught here. Two or more things graph. You guys really don't know how good you had it with those color additions. That was 2x squared minus 10x, which has to be wrapped in its own set of parentheses. If you can find math num n over d, use it. If you can't, you've got to do it like this. Every time you see two or more things, you wrap. 2x squared minus 10x gets wrapped. That's divided by parentheses x to the second minus 25. And a lot of these old calculators don't raise exponential space up high. You're supposed to use parentheses on that if you see two or more things. And then that was being multiplied by parentheses x plus 3 divided by parentheses 2x to the second. Appreciate the new Facebooks. Bring them back. Isn't that a lot uglier to type in? If you don't have the fraction choice? I think it is. You're lucky enough to have your own copy there. Oh, awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at the kids who walked in my room with a thousand dollars worth of stuff. Anyways, how do you zoom still? Six by hitting zoom six. The <laughs> black and white ones won't show you near as pretty picture. You don't. Know? That's just a hideous looking graph. Some people don't remember. Huh? Some people don't remember. Yeah. I'll just show you something. You can see. I'll snipe that one away from the bottom. I can really slow today. Are you sick or something, Parker? Mm -hmm. Here she is. I see an asymptote about here and about there. Where was the other one supposed to be? Ah, why are you there? Like I said, maybe now you've heard the expression you don't know the difference between your ass and a hole in the ground. The ground. There's also a difference between an asymptote and a hole in the graph. There's a hole in that graph. The calculators can't show it to you. There's a hole in that graph. There was supposed to be an asymptote at 5, right? No, there's not. Because at 5, you were trying to divide by what? What creates that asymptote? What were you trying to divide by? 0. Hit second trace, values highlighted, choose value. 
And you want to know what's going on when the x value is 5. What's your calculator say the y value is? Nothing. Let's see what it says, right? It's just plain. The calculator can't show you this, but at 5, there is a legit hole in the graph. There's nothing there. The reason that happened is because we canceled out the x minus 5 factor, didn't we? So, canceled out x minus 5, and that created a hole in the graph. Will your simplified function have that hole? Well, your simplified function, the graph is going to look exactly identical to that one right there. They're not entirely identical. They're pretty close. The graph will be the same. <coughs> simplified function was x plus 3 divided by parentheses x, parentheses x plus 5. And I'll go ahead and clear out why I want in a minute. But I want to show you the graphs look the same. So if I do a zoom 6, I don't expect any new material to show up. Take a a few seconds of the graph, the original and the line 1. And then it's going to trace right back over that, but what do you put in Y2? And nothing new showed up, did it? They look the same. I'm going to clear out Y1. Go back to the second graph. And the second graph is actually going to have a value at that point, or it should not. Simplification with rational expressions is kind of funny because the secondary function is actually not identical. So second trace value, the issue was the old one had a hole at 5, the new one does not. In calculus, you call that removing a discontinuity. Find any words there? called removing a discontinuity. But anyways, now you know the difference between an asymptote and a hole in a graph. Okay? They are different. Just a little bit. That'll probably show up when you're doing enrollment class next year. It'll show up in a pre-calc class. It should show up in college algebra. This is moving on forward, dividing rational expressions. It hinges like everything else out of the two. Most Algebra 2 problems are not a deficit from Algebra 1, they're not a deficit from geometry, they're a deficit from 5th grade math. Whoops, I wrote that wrong. If a kid couldn't do this in 5th grade, odds are they can't do what I'm asking you to do today. So in 5th grade, how did you divide a fifth by two thirds? Multiply by reciprocal. That's what you did. What's our circle of two thirds? Three over two. So a fifth divided by two thirds ends up being three tenths. We do the same thing today, except we're not using numbers, we're using x's. Same thing we're doing. It's fifth grade math standard. So the property A over B over C over D is A over B times B over C. Of course, the first one up here is the easy one. You are taking 7x, 7 over x plus 1, you are dividing by x plus 2 over 2x minus 3. And what's the first thing you want to do? Domain, thank you. I was hoping I could yell at one. <coughs> right. First thing you worry about is domain. What can't you divide by? Zero. If you're looking at 7 over x plus 1, what's the x value that makes the world end? Negative 1. All values of x such that x cannot be negative 1. If you're looking at x plus 2 over 2x minus 3, what's the x value that makes the world grow? No. Say 3 halves. <laughs> 2x minus 3 can't be 0, kids. x cannot be 3 halves. 
There's another one there too. You might see it. Nope. Okay, maybe you'll see it. I'm not finished with domain. There's a third X value. I was just curious if you saw it. All right, so how do we divide by a fraction again? Multiply by the reciprocal. Uh, usually you think about factoring first, but there's nothing to factor on this one. What's the reciprocal of x plus 2 over 2x minus 3? Do you see the other thing that x couldn't be? Now? X cannot be negative 2. That piece was in the denominator. Those are the three things that x can't be. There's nothing really to do with this one. Does anything cancel? No, nothing cancels. Up top, you can and should do the distributive property. It's 7 times 2x minus 3. There you go, 14x minus 21. What do your notes say about the denominator? Leave it factor. You leave the denominator factored because you're supposed to be able to look at something and tell what it can't be. You would have never guess this one could have been three halves. The simplified result can be, but the, or sorry, the simplified result can be, but the original function could not. Plus, when you look at it, you're supposed to have an idea where the asymptotes are. You're actually supposed to know where the zeros are. We can graph this thing out there quick. Actually, we couldn't. We could this. This would be a little different. This one has a hole in the graph of three halves, doesn't it? Where are its asymptotes? Negative one and negative two. And I guess if we want to do the rest of it, we would make up numbers and plug them in. I was wrong. You can't graph that one that quick. I have no idea how it starts, how it ends. It's got to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. I never mind. But you can look at that thing. You can gain some information off of it. That's why you get the factors. This is your last slide. Then you don't have to listen to me talk anymore, Dave. So how about that? Simplify in state domain. To see that domain, what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to factor. 4x don't factor. 5x minus 20 does. That's 5x minus 20 factor. There you go. 5 times x minus 4. I'm going to write this out as a better looking fraction. It helps you see domain better. Dividing by x squared minus 2x over x squared minus 6x plus 8. x squared minus 2x, both things, what do they contain? They contain an x. Pull an x from x squared, you got an x left. You pull it from negative 2x, you got x minus 2. x squared minus 6x plus 8. That'll factor. That's ninth grade low factor. How's it factor? There you go, x minus 2, x minus 4. That's everything factored. Check the last one if you want. Check it by doing one. Void there. What can't x be? Yeah, 2 or 4. If x was 4 here, you divide by 0. If x was 4 there, you divide by what? 0. Has to be two places. x cannot be 4. That's one of them. Up that. You look there, or actually there. What could next be? 2. Some of y'all might realize what you can go ahead and cancel. Some of y'all may not. I don't know. There's also a third thing x can't be, by the way. You might see it? Yeah, it can't be zero. If you don't see it now, it's okay. You'll see it when you flip. 
You divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to reciprocate the bottom. X minus 2 times X minus 4. Sitting pretty over X times X minus 2. And you just heard Cadence mention 0. Because that X is actually there, it can't be 1. Nobody wants to talk today. Zero. Throw some stuff away. X minus two is long. Anything else? Of course you can. Anything else? Okay, what do we have so far? We have 4x over 5x. What else is wrong? 4 fifths. I may go back a couple of places. It'd be really nice if you didn't have to do all this and we just kind of notice little things going on. See what actually disappeared. There we go. It's back about 60 moves. If things are in corresponding places, guess what happens to them? I'm trying to show you guys a shortcut here. They cancel out. That x minus 4 and that x minus 4 are both where? Denominators. Gone. Gone. That x and that x are both where? Numerator. Gone, gone. When you look at this thing as a whole, gone. I think you're good if you just look at them. You don't, you don't have to flip the fraction necessarily. Things in corresponding positions always cancel out. Last one, and you're done listening to me today. But you're not done with factoring or fractions. Tomorrow's add and subtract. You got 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 divided by 2x to the second plus 5x. Sorry, over 6x divided by. Factor. How's 2x squared minus 3x minus 5 factor? How's that piece factor? I don't disagree with Alex. Because the inside makes 5 and the outside makes what? Two. You always have three. So you're right. Divided by this thing, by the way, it's sitting over one. How's 2x squared plus 5x factor? It's first command of math. You can pull something and pull it. x. What's left? Negative. 2x plus 5. Everything's factored. I should probably go ahead and think about domain right now and then maybe again after I make my next move. If you're looking at that first fraction, 2x plus 5 over x minus 1 sitting times x minus 1 sitting over 6x, what can't x be? 0. There's a 6x in the denominator. If I put a 0 there, world's over. x is not 0. You might see the other one. You don't? It's okay. You'll see it in just a minute. We have to flip this fraction right here. First one's going to stay the way she is, which is 2x plus 5 times x minus 1 over 6x. Mm -hmm. What would that hurt? Six times a negative six is negative thirty-six. Is it okay to divide by a negative thirty-six? Mm -hmm. Yes. Negative five. 
That's right, Parker. Your brain finally woke up. You're supposed to flip x times 2x plus 5 over 1. So the other position that you've got to worry about is that 2x plus 5. There's no need to worry about this x because you've already counted for it being a 0, haven't you? But 2x plus 5 cannot be 0. Parker said negative 5 halves. You ready to cancel stuff out? What is Spears? 2x plus 5. And what are you left with? Still got this. One times x minus one, which is what's the same number? Squared. Next there, six x times x, x squared. That's it. You guys all have homework you can be doing. You can all be doing IXL and have a nice grade at the end of this, the last six weeks. You could all be doing Khan Academy. Or you can zone out on your phone and just complain about how hard everything is because you zone out on your phone. Your little mental breaks you have to take. Thank you.